Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be making a folded fabric, no sew pine cone ornament, just like this one. You're going to be amazed at how easy and quickly this comes together. Now, this is actually just one version of a pine cone. Um, we've actually got multiple different ways of putting together pine cones. We're going to be using the square fold on this one, which kind of results in a little bit more of a haphazard looking pine cone. This is actually the way that I prefer to do them, but we do have, like I said, a couple of different ways. And this way is also less structured. So what's nice about that is you can adapt this to various shapes of foam. So here I've used an egg shape. You could actually do this on a round ball like I've done here. Um, and it's very easy to adapt with this particular fold. And you'll see that sometimes these are called in this round version, sometimes these are called artichoke um, ornaments or even pineapple ornaments. In fact, I used to call this the pineapple ornament as well. I'm trying to kind of get away from that now because we actually have a like legit pineapple ornament pattern now. So in order to make things a little less confusing, we're kind of lumping all of these into the category of pine cone. And again, we've got multiple versions. And if you would like to make sure you do not miss out on any of our other tutorials for any of the other versions, please be sure that you are subscribed. I think it's down there somewhere um, to this channel. All right. So with all that being said, let's talk about what you will need to make this. All right. So first you are going to need a foam egg. And the size that I'll be using is about four inches tall. Um, this is, if you're shopping in my supply shop, this is the large size that we carry. And this is soft foam, so it's easy to push pins into, and you are gonna be pushing a lot of pins into the foam, so you do want to definitely keep in mind the density of the foam that you're using. Now, you could totally get away with using any other size. You don't have to use this exact size. Just keep in mind that that is going to make a difference with how much fabric you need. If you go uh, bigger, you're gonna need, obviously, more pins and fabric. You're also going to need a whole bunch of straight pins for this variation that I did here and this size you're gonna need about 130 pins for the fabric part plus whatever you're going to need to put um, beads and embellishments on I've probably got like maybe 20 25 beads kind of pinned on around this um, so keep that in mind and then also to pin on your bows or whatever else that you're gonna be putting on your pine cone so 130 for the fabric plus whatever you need for embellishments and of course you'll need the embellishments. So I've got some beads here. I've got some clear crystal beads and then just some little tiny silver round beads. These are like three millimeters, I believe for the silver beads. Um, and these clear beads I've got are about four or five millimeters. And I just got a little handful of them to put around my pine cone. And then you will also need ribbons for the top. Um, now, some people don't like a lot of bows and things like that. If you don't want bows, you're gonna need something at the top because the tops where all the fabric comes up and converges at the end and there's gonna be some raw edges and messiness up there that you'll have to hide. So you could do flowers, pine branches, pine, little mini pine cones. Um, there's all sorts of things that you could use to decorate the top. You can go on my blog, theornamentgirl.com slash blog to see tons of ideas for topping no sew fabric ornaments. And of course you're going to need fabric. So you need lots of squares of fabric. I'm using two inch squares and I've got two colors here. Now for this size egg, you're gonna need about 90 to 100 two inch squares. Now my main fabric in my pine cone is this pattern fabric. And so I've got more of those and then I've got about maybe 10 or 11 or so of this medium color. You could do all one color you could do lots of different colors, whatever it is that you want to do, but your total is going to need to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 squares. And that is it, so let's go ahead and start. Okay, so we're starting with the first square. This is actually going to sit on the bottom and cover, whoops, cover the base of the egg so that that way you can't see any foam. So we're gonna find the center of this first by folding it in half once and then in half one more time. We're just going to finger press the corner here and that's going to tell us where the center is when we unfold it. So I'm going to stick a pin right through that. I'm sticking down in through the pattern side so that the pin is coming back up through the unpatterned side. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this right into the bottom of my egg, right at the, the more narrow end. Now the foam that we've got in the shop has a little imprint and it might be hard to see because I can see my light is just flashing off of this thing, but there's a little imprint in the top of these and that'll tell you where the center is. Now, if you do not have this brand of foam, if you don't have our ornament girl foam, that's fine. You can just like eyeball it, just hold it like this, look at it and just try to press that into the center as much as, much as you possibly can. 
All right, so what we're gonna do now is just smooth this down as much as possible and pin the four corners. It is not going to lie perfectly smooth because we're putting a square flat piece of fabric down on a rounded surface. So it's not gonna lie flat, but that is totally okay. And I'm pinning there in the corners just to hold it down. We're gonna leave that pin there for now, that center pin. And now we will start building those layers going down the egg. Now with my ornament, I'm gonna be doing um, mostly this pine cone pattern fabric, but I am gonna be staggering in this darker blue every so often. So I'm going to begin each layer with that darker blue. I'm just gonna put one of these on each layer and then do the rest of the layer in the pine fabric. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's just begin. We're gonna hold the first piece of fabric, whichever one you're using, with the pattern side facing down. And we're gonna fold it in half once, and then fold it in half again. When you fold this, your pattern side should be facing out. And we want to hold this like a diamond. Now notice how you have some raw edges now and some folded edges. We want the folded edges to all be pointing down and the raw edges to be pointing up like this. Now also you'll see how one side you can open almost like a book and the other side is closed. Okay, we wanna make sure that we're holding this so that the open side is pointing to the left. And we're going to be doing this on every single piece just to keep things really consistent and it's also going to help us save on some pins i'll explain in just a second so we're going to take the egg and we've got that center pin still in there to help us see where the exact center is now see how you've got these four corners we're going to aim the top edge of this new square just aiming it right up towards one of those four corners and the bottom point that's the folded edges is going to point right at that center pin and we want to just set it back from that center pin, like maybe a quarter of an inch or so, maybe even, it might even be less. And I'm going to grab my tape measure so I can give you an exact measurement here. Now I don't want you to worry about being exact, but just so you can get an idea of where I am. So it looks like that point is sitting like close to three eighths of an inch from, just shy of three eighths of an inch from that center pin. Okay, again, you can just totally eyeball that, but I just wanted to give you an idea. Okay, so see how we've got this open side here? We're gonna pin that. We're gonna pin on that open side to hold it shut and to hold it on the foam like this. All right, that's the first piece. So let's go ahead and grab a second square. And I'm gonna move, for me, I'm gonna move to my pine patterned fabric. And I'm gonna create that square again, folding it in half twice. I've got my raw edges pointing up and my folded edges pointing down, my open side to the left. And now I'm going to move to the right of this first square that I added, and I'm gonna move just to the right so that the left corner of this new piece overlaps the right side of the last piece. And I want my tip to sit about the same distance from the center pin that the first one did. And once I'm happy with where that is, I'm gonna stick a pin through the left side here to hold both the left side of this new piece and the right side of this piece. So this, doing it like this, we're gonna do it all the way around for the whole layer and for the rest of the layers. Um, this is gonna help save you pins. So instead of pinning down both sides on each piece, we're gonna do that pinning on the open side only on each piece and then pinning through that side with the next piece. It's gonna save us like a hundred pins, <laughs> so that's nice. And we're just gonna move right along and go to the next square. Again, just creating my square, holding it like a diamond with my raw edges pointing up and my open side pointing left. And now I'm moving to the right of this last one that I added overlapping its right side and putting my point about the same distance from my center pin as the other two points. And then pinning through the left side of this square and the right side of that one. Okay, so we've got three pieces on. We're just gonna keep on going Raw edges pointing up, open side left. 
and I'm moving to the right. Just watching that my point, the new point, is about the same distance from the center pin. And then pinning right through that left side to hold that side down and the previous piece's right side. So we've got just a couple more pieces to go before we arrive back to our starting point. Well, it's looking like I'll be able to do one more square in there. So this time, when we place this square, it's going to overlap the right side of the last piece, just like always, but it's also going to overlap the left side of the first piece. And so this time, we will need to use two pins to hold it in place. Now, if you really, really wanted to save a pin, you could actually remove the pin on the left side of the very first piece and just use the same pin. But if that's difficult, you can just use another pin and stick it right in there. And then that is it for this layer. So really easy. And that's literally all we're gonna do for the entire egg all the way up until we get to the top. Now, what I like to do is, uh, the reason why I am using these like haphazard darker blue pieces is because I find that it makes it easier for me to see where I began each layer. And you'll see as we start working our way up the egg, it can get a little bit more difficult to see where you are as you've added more layers. It's, you can start to get kind of lost. And so by adding another color as the beginning of each layer, you always know when you've arrived at the back to the beginning of the layer because you'll arrive back at that um, piece that's different than the rest of the layer. And what I do to make sure that I'm not like ending up with one line of the different color is I'll just start my next layer somewhere else. Like I'll start my next one maybe right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Prepping the fabric the exact same way, folding it in half twice. I've got my raw edges pointing up and I've got my open side pointing left. So I'm gonna start somewhere like the, on the opposite side of this original piece down here. Um, but now, of course, I'm gonna be moving up the egg just a little bit. So see how right here is my points from the first layer. I'm coming up the egg just a little bit, probably about a quarter of an inch, maybe a half of an inch, not a quarter of an inch, a half of an inch or so up from the tips of this. Now, you don't have to be exact. You mostly just wanna make sure that you are indeed moving up the egg <laughs> and that you can see the tips from the previous layer like this. Now I'm going to start just like I did before by pinning right through the left side to hold that side closed. Now I mentioned a second ago that whenever I come back around, like I'll work my way around and when I get back around, I'm going to know where I started because of this piece um, being a different color. Here's the thing. If you're making one right now with all the same color, that's, you're not going to have that luxury. But what you can do is you can actually leave the very first pin of each layer sticking up a little bit like that. Like don't push it in all the way. And then that's another way that you can know when you've arrived back to the beginning of the layer. And I know it probably seems kind of silly now, like, cause there's not much on here yet. So it seems like it'd be really easy to see where you started your layer, but literally by like layer three or four, it gets harder to tell. So this will really help you if you're starting to have a hard time seeing where you're beginning and ending each layer. Okay, let's go ahead and move along. I'm gonna switch back to my um, pine fabric. Same fold, and now I'm just gonna move to the right of that very first piece, pin through both of their corners, and that's it. And after I do a couple more of these squares, I'm actually gonna speed up the video because it's gonna get boring for you to watch me do the same exact thing over and over and over again, but I will stop and pause um, or actually stop and just explain anything that comes up that might need any extra 
explaining. Okay, there's already something. <laughs> so you may find as you're moving along like this that in order to keep your, your pine cone tips even, or at least sort of even, that you can't hide the pin from the layer below. Or you may even have a little edge of raw fabric showing. Don't worry too much if that happens. It's not that big of a deal. Just keep on going, ignore any pins that are showing. And when we get done, um, we're actually going to just go along through the whole thing and find any of those pins that may be showing. And that's where we're gonna stick a bead <laughs> so we can hide them. So don't worry too much about being perfect. It's really hard to get, like to hide every single pin and raw edge in these ornaments because they're not like exact, you know, they're not like the basic star pattern where everything is exact and precise. Um, so please don't get caught up in perfection. It's pretty much impossible, but we're totally gonna hide it and no one will ever know when we're done. Okay, so I'm back to the beginning of my layer. It's easy for me to see that because I've arrived not only back at my darker blue, but I also left that pin sticking up, so that's another way I could know. I'm just gonna actually take it out because it's already sticking up, and then just pin it right back through the right side of my newest triangle or uh, square. And that's it for layer two. So we're actually just going to continue working our way up the egg layer by layer, and it's probably gonna take somewhere around 10 or 11 layers or so until we get to the very top. Now see here how I put these a little closer together? That helped to hide some of that stuff from underneath too because I had like a couple spots there that were, that were just hard to hide. So you can do that too. You can always space them out. You can put them closer together. That's kind of the nice thing about this more unstructured pattern that you can, it's like really flexible. You can totally move things around, um, whatever you need to do. Okay, that's the end of layer three, moving on to layer four. Okay, so see how I am almost reaching the left side of my first piece of this um, layer, but it's not quite reaching. So I've got a couple of choices here. I could stretch it, I can move it further over to the right so it reaches the left side of this and it still is covering the right side of that. Um, I could do that or I could put them closer together, which I think is what I'm gonna do. It's, this one's a little bit harder because look, that pin from below is like right there dead smack in the middle. <laughs> so I know that like if I squeeze two in here, that still might show. I'm not sure, but actually I think I might be better off doing like this because it hides that pin and it does indeed reach. I mean, it's barely reaching, but it is still reaching. So I think that's what I'm gonna do here. And I think that that's going to be okay. All right, so that's the end of that layer. Already, we're already halfway up the egg, moving right along, so I'm gonna move on to my next layer. And you may have noticed that what I've been doing when I begin each layer with the dark blue, I'm just kind of picking a spot where the blue is more sparse. So like, I wouldn't necessarily wanna put it like right there, although I could, I would be okay, it would totally be okay if two of these were right beside each other in the pine cone. But you can also look for like an area where it's sitting a little further away from one of the blue pieces.
All right, we're getting there. We've just got a couple layers to go. Now, as we are arriving closer to the top of the egg and things are getting narrow, more narrow again, we went from real narrow and then wide and now it's starting to get more narrow again, um, you're gonna notice that in order to crowd the pieces in as it starts to go more narrow, that you actually are gonna be like tilting the squares more like this, kind of like instead of them being in a line like, like this going around, it's almost like you're having to like circle them in a little bit their top corners are just kind of facing into each other a little bit more. That's totally normal because we're coming up to this more narrow area of the egg. And it's going to be even more true here in this last layer or two that we have to do. Now we're going to do another layer or two just like what we've been doing, but then we're going to do the very tippy top a little bit differently just because it gets a little hairy up there. It gets a little bit harder to do. So I'll show you what I mean when we get there. Um, for now, I'm thinking that I've got maybe one more layer like this. Maybe two, but I think one more layer. So we'll see. All right, so we have arrived pretty much to the top. We've only got like this tiny little bit of foam showing. Actually, you can just see like the imprint from the top of my foam showing through. Now we could add another layer um, and you totally could if you wanted to, but we're, it eventually gets to the point where you're just kind of like adding layers of fabric up there and you end up just having lots of points kind of sticking out of the top and it just kind of gets messier and messier. So we really don't want to do that. Um, we're at the point where we can start working on finishing this top. You're never going to get an absolute perfect finish up here. We're going to have to hide it with bows or beads or flowers or something at the top, but we do want to get it as neat as possible so it's a little bit easier to cover up. So what we're going to do is just move to a little bit of a different technique here. It's not really a different technique, but just a different way of doing the top. I call this the diamond method um, because it gives you a little bit of a structure to follow when you're doing this up here. And we're going to be kind of creating like a diamond. So let's go ahead and get the next piece ready. I am again going to start with my darker blue color just so I can see where I start. We're creating the fold, um, but this time we're going to take this and look at the bottom edge. Instead of looking at where our tip is pointing, we're gonna look at the bottom point where the raw edges are. And we want this, that like corner to sit right on top of that little bit of foam that's left. So the center. So you might not have a perfect circle of foam like this, but whatever looks like the center of the top of your pine cone, that's where we want that to sit. And when I've got that where I want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick a pin in the left corner like always, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick the right corner in as well. Okay, so we've got, here's our little point sticking out, but we've got this bottom point aimed right at the center. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but directly opposite. We want to have the bottom point of another piece pointing directly at this one. Okay, so we're gonna do the same exact thing. We want this raw edge point to point right there at the bottom point of the first piece. And I'm gonna let mine overlap just a tad. 
And I'm going to go ahead and pin those two corners down. And now we're going to do the same thing to fill in the two other sides. So see how there's like a little, it's very hard to see, but see how there's like a little triangle here. We're going to fill those in with two more pieces. Okay, so there's the two bottom points right in the center. And I'm just going to fill that in with this triangle or square. <laughs> In most of the patterns that we do, we're using triangles. So I don't know, I've probably said triangle all along in this video and not even realized it. <laughs> and then one more. Same exact thing. We've got this one last space because we did these three squares. We're going to fill that in with this last one. Okay, so what we've really got here now is I've got it held like a diamond, but it's actually just a square of these four pieces, but it's nice and neat. So it's not just like working our way around and kind of haphazard. It's like a nice, neat square of four pieces um, or diamond. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do four more just like that, except this time I'm going to set them perpendicular to these pieces. So we'll go ahead and get another piece ready. And here's my square or diamond. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this now. I'm still aiming that bottom raw point at the center, but it is overlapping a little further into the center now. And I want this point to just go sit perpendicular to the sides of that um, layer below. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. Again, I'm using two pins to hold that down. I'm gonna do the same thing opposite. So I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing here, but I am gonna overlap it more with the piece that I just put on. So this time, see how they're overlapping a lot more than I did on the last layer. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the sides. So here is my two finished points. You see how we're really neat, neatening, neatening <laughs> up the top? here and we have like all of those raw edges and pins are kind of being brought into one much smaller section now. So we're going to do one more to cover up this last little bit of pins and raw edges and this will be the very last piece. And I'm even kind of bringing my pin in just a little bit from the very corner, just, just to bring them in a little bit closer. But that's pretty much it. So now we've only got a couple pins here that we need to worry about hiding. And everything else that we're going to see from the side is going to be these finished edges. Once we put some bows or whatever up there, that's going to be all totally fine. Now remember I said a while ago, if you've got pins showing, and you can see, especially on this side, I mean, whoa, look at all those. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. We're totally going to hide those. So what I'm going to do before I work on bows, wow, there's like hardly any pins on this side. This must have been my bad side. We're going to go through and just remove those pins and then add beads in their place. So I've got my little um, thing of beads here. I'm going to get a couple of them ready. All right, I got a bunch of beads all pinned up and ready to go here. So I'm just going to start taking a look around the pine cone and finding spots where I've got a pin showing or a raw edge if there's any of those. And I'm going to just holding down the fabric because you don't want to like pull it all the way out, but I'm going to hold down the fabric and just pull out each of those pins and then put a beaded pin in its place. 
and it's like it never happened. <laughs> so we're just going to do that all the way around. So I just pulled a pin out from up there, but I really wanted to put that pin like beside the um, silver one that I already just put on. And so I just pinned the new beaded pin a little lower because it's still holding that same piece of fabric down. So it's totally fine if it's a little bit lower on the fabric piece. I'm not too worried about like pins that are up super high because I know that my bow is going to cover that. So I'm not going to go all the way to the top, but I'm just going to get some of these ones that are a little bit down from the top and that are really um, obvious. Now something else, if you've got spots like I do where there's a whole bunch of pins like kind of all bunched in one spot and you may maybe not necessarily want to put a whole bunch of beads all in one spot like that. And I think I just pulled this out of here. Um, you can take the same pin and just put it up a little higher. You don't necessarily have to stick a bead onto it if you don't want to, like if you've got too much in one spot like I do right there. Just tuck it up underneath a little higher and hide it and you'll be fine. And now, just because I've got way more beads on one side, um, this was my ugly side, now it's gonna be my pretty side because there's more beads on it. Um, I'm actually just gonna add a few more beads throughout, like even where I don't where I don't necessarily need to hide anything, just to kind of even things out. And I like to do, I like to do a couple beads in one spot every so often. Oh, there's another pin. All right, so I may go back later and add a few more pins or maybe rearrange a little bit, but for now, let's move on to doing the ribbon topper. So I've got a couple of different types of ribbon here. I'm gonna start with this more narrow ribbon and get those pieces ready. And what I'm going to do is do three bows at the top and then bunch them all together. Actually, first though, we wanna do the hanger because we wanna put that in first. So I'm just gonna cut off about 10 or 11 inches of ribbon or so. However long you want your hanger to be. And I'm gonna loop this and put the ends together like that. And then just go ahead and stick a pin through both ends like this. And I'm just gonna pop that right into the top, right in the center so that I could hang it straight down like this. Now let's go ahead and make a couple of bows. So since I'm doing three bows at the top, I'm going to make three smaller sized bows. So not like the typical bows that we put on some of the other ornaments that we've done. If you've seen any of my other videos, um, we're gonna go a little smaller than that just because we wanna fit all three up there and we don't want it to be like super poof. <laughs> so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a pin through the end of my ribbon and I wanna do like six loops that are maybe about two to two and a half inches long. I'm thinking two and a half inches long. And so if you're gonna do the same thing, then you're gonna need a piece of ribbon that is somewhere in the neighborhood of like 15, 16 inches long or something like that for each loop. So I'm doing three, so I would need three pieces of ribbon that are about 15 to 16 inches long. I'm just gonna loop about two and a half inches. You can totally use a tape measure here if you want to, if it helps, or you can just eyeball. If your loops are not perfect, it is not going to make too much of a difference because there's gonna be three bows up there, so it's gonna be really hard to tell if your loops aren't exactly all exactly the same as each other. So don't get too caught up in being perfect. All right, so I've got six loops there, and I'm happy with that. And you could actually add seven if you wanted to, too. I do do seven usually on other bows when I'm doing a single bow, but here, since we're gonna have them all up there in the, in the top, I don't think we need it. All right, so I'm gonna do that two more times.
That one is all kinds of wonky. That's all right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and just place these around the top, down a little ways from that center pin that's holding the hanger on. I'm coming down like maybe a half of an inch from there, but I'm kind of aiming my pin down towards the center. So it's kind of like, see how I'm aiming it? I hope you can see that. Kind of like that. I'm just aiming it down towards the center. That way the bow kind of sits a little bit like facing out a little bit. Okay, so there is the first set of of bows. Now this was really narrow ribbon. This is was one eighth inch width. So I'm actually going to add a second layer because this really doesn't, even though it's a lot of bow, we see a lot of poof here. There's not a lot of coverage because it's so narrow, but that's why I've got a second ribbon. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this second ribbon, which is about three eighths of an inch in width, but I'm not gonna just pin it regular, like just on the pin. I'm actually gonna put a bead on my pin first. I'm gonna use these crystal beads like this and then I'm gonna make my bow because this is gonna show. We're gonna pop one of these bows onto each of the first three bows and this way it'll be pretty. We won't see any pins other than just a teeny little tip top of that pin. And again, I'm making small little loops. They're only about two, two and a half inches or so. And I'm gonna stick one of those right on top of one of the first bows, like that. And I'm gonna do that two more times to cover the remaining two bows. So see how when you stick these in and you do the three kind of up close to each other, it almost like adds extra height to your bow here in the center because the sides of your other bows just sort of push against each other and it adds that height. Now, if you don't want that, if you want things to be a little bit flatter, you can actually just spread them out further. So you could actually put your bows a little further from that center pin and then they're not gonna have quite so much poof <laughs> like this, okay? But otherwise, we are done. So easy peasy, right? Like that came together way faster than it looks like it does. When you look at it, it looks so complicated. But that is it. So guys, I really hope that you enjoyed making this. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we do have other methods and folding techniques for doing um, no sew pine cones. Um, here's an example of a more structured design. Um, this uses a triangle fold and I do have a video for this coming soon as well or for a variation of this. Um, here's another one that uses the triangle fold. This one is a less structured design, but it's the same triangle fold. So lots of different ways that you can do this. And again, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss when I post videos teaching how to do them. As always, if you've got any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments below and I will help you out the best that I can. Thanks so much for watching. Happy ornamenting.